most people in the Cardano ecosystem aren't aware and keen of the instruments that are available for us to use and take advantage of right now, very early stages of Cardano's DeFi. We're gonna talk about YAM4 protocol, a borrowing and lending platform on Cardano. YAM4 comes into the mix and does something completely different and removes margin call, removes liquidations, and these health factors, this phenomenon. Okay, we're gonna look at the CBLP token, which is Yam4's native token, how that plays a role in borrowing in the Yam4 protocol. Their partnerships are extremely strong. They're growing. The test net has just ended. They're about to come on mainnet. They are gearing up. They're warming up the engines for the mainnet that will couple with their fair token launch also. And then when Yam4 does come out, because I don't know when it is, right? I feel like Yam4 has a bright future. What I love about the Cardano DeFi ecosystem is that it hasn't really been exposed to the world like Ethereum's DeFi, right? It really hasn't gone through a DeFi summer. And that's extremely exciting to me. For the past three years with some of the DEXs and two years on the borrowing and lending platforms, I've had a wealth of experience uh, participating in Cardano DeFi. And personally, I like to use both of those in conjunction with each other. We'll get into a little bit of that. I'll show you some of my positions so that you can realize that if you have not watched any of my videos before that I am indeed a participator. And so what I'm telling you comes from my own experience, although it is not financial advice. I'm putting this video out because it's another opportunity prior to the mainnet launch. Yeah, the token's out and that's another exciting opportunity, but it's not out on mainnet and it's coming really soon, okay? Maybe by the time you watch this video, it'll be out. What I wanna show you here is that I have this CLB, CBLP position. And we're gonna look at that for a second, okay? We're gonna look at that. So I came over here, this is on MinSwap. I came over here and showed you my liquidity. This is like one of my accounts again, right? This is just one of my accounts. And I wanted to show you my CBLP position because right now YAM4 is not on the mainnet. However, you can still get their tokens on a DEX like MinSwap. And then you can take those tokens, should you desire, and provide them as liquidity onto MinSwap you'll receive liquidity provider tokens or LP tokens that kind of act as a receipt for your participation. And then should you want to, you could take those liquidity provider tokens that get sent directly to your wallet when you provide liquidity and farm them in their pool. So I'm excited to participate in the CBLP farms here on MinSwap so that I am acquiring some of their tokens such that I can use them on their platform when they come into play. You could take those liquidity provider tokens that get sent directly to your wallet when you provide liquidity and farm them in their pool. Okay, the reason I'm getting involved with the CBLP farm is because I would like to take advantage of higher emissions that are coming out of the CBLP project at this very moment. I have pulled 9,000 ADA with the CBLP token. That is equal to 489,000. And again, these screenshots were taken right before I started this video. Uh, these are my LP tokens that get sent to my wallet. And that is a representation, okay, of both of these assets combined, right? And so that is my total ADA worth with my LPs. But when you farm these, okay, you get rewards. And so right now, since my last harvest, I have 207 ADA worth of rewards. Now we're gonna look at that. That's gonna be in the form of mint token, ADA, and CBLP, okay? And my pool share is 1.728%. That'll continue to go down over time as more and more people start to provide liquidity. All right, so why, why do this? Okay, so here are my farms now. Okay, so this is a this is my farms and listed in order. A little different. Um, shows it shows my LP locked. I have four hundred and this is this is how many ADA are locked in the entire pool. Okay, 
So all together, all the liquidity providers that pulled their ADA together equals 426,866 ADA, okay? And my stake in the game here is 19,247. But look at the APR, and this is why um, I wanted to show this for you, take the time to show it for you, because the APR is 56%. So since my last harvest, like I showed you my rewards over here, I'm going to take you back. My rewards say 207.16 ADA right there, right? Well, that if I, if I add up my min rewards, okay, of 57.7, you know, so I only have, well, 1.31 ADA. And look at the CBLP tokens. 10,331. Add all those up, you're going to get that 20, you're going to get this number here. Okay, the 207.6. And so I just wanted to kind of drop down and highlight this pool because this pool, this is this is what I'm doing. I'm I'm getting prepared for the mainnet launch of Yam4. Okay, so Yam4, yam4.com. Borrowing simplified. This is a very exciting project. So enter Yam4 and discover a new approach to crypto-backed loans designed exclusively for Cardano. Enjoy indefinite loan terms, zero ongoing interest, and no risk of margin calls. It's amazing. Total value locked. Look, they're 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 coming. So there's nothing locked on the platform yet. So there's a CBLP flat fee. We're going to get into that and a fixed interest rate of 9%. Okay. Look at their partners. I've been, I've been a Jiro fan for a while, for quite some time. I have a few Jiro wallets and some Jiro tokens. I like that they're partnered with Jiro wallet. Orkfax is a major, major person, uh, you know, protocol of interest in in my world um orc fax is an oracle i did an interview with peter van garderen uh it's one of my biggest it's actually the biggest pool i have in minswap and i like the fact that gam4 is partnering with orc fax for to call its its cardano native token feeds okay the price feeds fluid tokens is another one i like them i was a part of their liquidity bootstrapping event on minswap so fluid tokens, these are good signs for me. These are good signs for me when I'm researching a project. Moneta, this is a stable coin, Moneta, USDM. Met them, met them at Rare Evo, been following them for quite some time. And actually at the Intersect committee meeting in Philadelphia, I ran into the same guy who I met at uh, Rare Evo, who lives in New York. Moneta, that makes me excited, makes me excited. Dex Hunter. Okay, if you don't know about Dex Hunter, they are a Dex aggregator on the Cardano blockchain. I'm excited about Dex Hunter Pond, and I'm sure that these partners and allies will continue to grow. This is a fantastic start for me. Uh, simplicity in a nutshell, right? It's so simple. You borrow, you wait, you repay, all right? There's no time. How long do you want the loan for, right? So the features, no margin calls, borrow with confidence, knowing your loan is secure against market volatility. So they eliminate margin calls and any liquidation uh, risk, providing like we just talked about, peace of mind, protecting your financial plans from unexpected disruptions. So GAM4 actually takes on that responsibility. No ongoing interest payments. Experience a transparent and predictable borrowing experience with a single upfront payment, and that's gonna be paid in the CBLP token and no recurring interest charges. All interest is accrued at the total debt position and repaid upon closure of the loan at the borrower's discretion. There's no time limit, so it could be just talked about. Okay, so you could repay at your own pace uh, and enjoy that the, the freedom of what that has to offer you. Now, I like that actually because I would, I would consider myself like a swing trader in, in a sense, like a long-term swing trader that um, recognizes in the blockchain space, Bitcoin, right? There's, there's four-year cycles, really. 
there's nothing said and definite, but from the capitulation, from the low and the, and the trough and the sideways accumulation phase, all the way from that low to the next peak is generally three years. And from that peak to the capitulation is generally one year. It is quite exciting what you could do in taking advantage of the price volatility, both on the way up and on the way down. So what's the catch? The catch is that YAM4 fees are higher than traditional loans as the protocol absorbs the risk of market fluctuations to protect you from margin calls and ongoing interest. This model isn't for everyone, but if you prioritize flexibility, predictability, and peace of mind, the YAM4 model could be the perfect fit. And here are people that are just talking about it, okay? Boom, you can plug right into their Discord. Um, here are some frequently asked questions. Big Blimp are the creators of Yam4. Brandon is one of the founders of Yam4 and Vladimir, um, the founder of Ncoins and ZK Fold. I think they were introduced into the community on Catalyst Fund 6 and became um, friendly and respected ever since. So that is really exciting Catalyst. Now you click launch, boop. Eventually, we're going to go right into their app. But right now, Yam4 Testnet V2 has successfully concluded. Thank you to everybody that participated. So they're now focusing on completing official audits by TX Pipes. That actually has been completed, and we're going to read that together here in a moment. Uh, and they are now ready to turn on their mainnet launch and fair token offering, which they're going to be doing at the exact same time, which I think is very interesting also. So you don't just have a, have a lot of downward pressure on the price of the CBLP token that uh, respects holders, current holders of the project. So I, I really do think that's nice. Follow the uh, follow the socials, right? And so we go to resources, light paper, white paper, GitHub audit. We're going to check out the light paper. I already have this open, this tab open. Click, click, and we're going to go to their light paper. Okay. And so here are the here are the executive summary. The contents, the overview, loan cycle, and we're going to check it out. Okay, so it streamlines that card on a blockchain with this decentralized platform. Loans are secured using ADA, Cardano Native's cryptocurrency. And then CBLP token holders manage loan terms and the platform's governance, ensuring long term stability, revenue generation, decentralized governance. Okay, we're going to be looking at it. So when you supply, okay, so the YAM4 protocol is a decentralized lending system that allows its users to attain crypto-backed loans without set without a set maturity by using the Cardano's blockchain native token ADA as collateral. And they will repay their loans whenever they want. The loan that you're going to be getting, as we'll see, is a stable coin. So the CBLP token utility. So when you're supplying ADA, and then seeking to get a loan, you will be paying a one-time fee in CBLP tokens when you take out a loan. And that integrates this token, the utility of the CBLP token, directly into the lending process. And so there's also governance where you can vote on the direction on key decisions within the protocol. And then there's an economic incentive. The tokenomics of CBLP incentivize holding and participating in the protocol as fees collected in CBLP are sent to the treasury, increasing the value controlled by the protocol and by extension, its token holders. CBLP, I was talking with Diego. I actually met Diego. Diego, if you're coming across this far, you know, hi to you. Saw him at Rare Evo. We started talking. We've been talking on Discord. I asked him, I said, what does CBLP stand for? And he's like, I think, and let me check. And, and he, he went to check. It's uh, Community Backed Loan Position. Yes, Community Backed Loan Position. So there's a little tidbit for you. I love, I love understanding what some of that stuff means. Okay. So, there's an, so here's some great utility, right? So gives you reason why I felt, if you go back to me farming on MinSwap, I'm 
taking advantage of acquiring these tokens right now through participation in the emission schedule as fast as um, as, as, as best I can with the time with the time allotted. So what what is up with the stablecoin treasury? So the internal stablecoin stablecoin treasury is the financial backbone of the Ampor protocol. Okay, and the treasury consists of a diverse basket of stable coins, all native to the Cardano blockchain. And these stable coins are the primary medium for funding loans, enabling the protocol to sidestep conventional lending institutions. Okay, and the treasury doesn't hold onto these assets for long. The protocol aims to promptly lend them out to borrowers. And we're going to look at how that is uh, structured here when we look into the treasury. Yamfor maintains a CBLP denominated treasury that entirely comprises of CBLP tokens, the native governance and utility token of the protocol. Okay, and there's going to be an auction portal where they're offered to the community at a discounted rate. Okay, and this the, the proceeds from these auctions in the form of stable coins are then redirected to bolster the stable coin treasury, ensuring a consistent supply of funds for the issuance of new loans. This mechanism is vital for perpetuating the protocol's liquidity and ensuring the stability and longevity of the YAM4 platform. So the CBLP auction portal is operates by allowing individuals to use their stable coins to purchase CBLP tokens at a discounted rate. This mechanism serves a dual purpose. One, it provides the protocol with a steady stream of stable coins, right? And so stable coins being the only thing that are borrowable, the only thing that you can borrow on YAM for are stable coins. And the only thing that you can supply is ADA, and the only thing that you could use to pay the fee is CBLP, the one-time fee, okay? CBLP. And there's a, there's a scenario, there's a hypothetical simulation down here that we'll look at that shows this very clearly. The mechanism serves a dual purpose, okay? Um, steady stream of stable coins and offers CBLP token holders a direct avenue to increase their holdings and by extension their influence within the protocol's governance. So right now, immediately, I can imagine that there's going to be tons of arbitrage opportunities. Um, advantage, there's so much advantage in that process where you can capture these tokens at a discounted right, um, discounted rate, I should say, rate. So the tokens sold through the auction come from Yampor's internal CBLP treasury. So as participants buy CBLP tokens, the stable coins they use for purchase are channeled back into the lending protocol, ensuring a consistent replenishment of funds for new loans. This creates a cyclical system that boosts the protocol's liquidity while simultaneously supporting the CBLP token value and utility. The CBLP auction portal stands as a strategic tool for growth and sustainability. See, when you when you have to pay that one-time fee in CBLP tokens, those go into a portal, like a vault, that acquire a certain threshold amount that then get put up for auction, okay? Smart contracts and NFTs. Okay, so when the when a user locks their ADA collateral, smart contract governs the terms of the loan, ensuring that the process is transparent and tamper-proof. So you know exactly what you're getting into the moment you enter the protocol and lock your ADA. And no nothing, no one can alter or tamper with the arrangement and the agreement here. Okay, so upon initiating a loan, the protocol issues an NFT to the borrower, which symbolizes ownership of the loan and the terms agreed upon. This is extremely exciting. This NFT is a unique digital certificate that can be traded. You can actually trade that NFT or held until the borrower decides to repay the loan and reclaim their ADA collateral. Just imagine that. A whole market now of NFTs that can be traded that represent a loan position. I think that's why they're partnering with Fluid Finance too. Um, 
It's worth stressing that the power can that the borrower can trade the NFT representing the underlying loan, allowing them to engage in all manner of varied trading strategies. We just talked about. Together, these components create a decentralized borrow-centric lending environment. The CBLP token allows users to participate in the ecosystem and gives them a stake in its governance. The stablecoin treasury provides the capital. The CBLP treasury refills the auction platform that increases the available funds and the smart contracts with NFTs ensures a secure and transparent loan process. Okay, so look at the loan cycle here. When a borrower opts for a loan, they pledge ADA as collateral and lock it into YAM4 smart contracts. The system immediately calculates a one-time fee payable in CBLP tokens based on current ADA USD market prices called on by Orkfax, Oracle. <laughs> So we saw them in their uh, partnerships, which I like that. When someone starts a loan and pays the fee in CBLP tokens, those tokens are moved to the CBLP treasury, which takes them out of circulation. Okay. But will you say, well, what, what, what if I only have a thousand ADA and I don't have any CBLP tokens and I don't want to go on a DEX and trade and get CBLP tokens? If that's your question. If that question pops up in your mind, you are going to have that answered very soon. When the demand is high for loans, CBLP token holders can choose to raise the CBLP for initiating a loan. All this will be held with governance. Upon fee repayment, borrowers receive stable coins directly from the protocol stablecoin treasury based on the agreed, the agreed loan to value ratio set at loan initiation. And along with that loan, the unique NFT simultaneously minted to your wallet, representing the loan terms and serving as a digital certificate of your collateralized ADA. Interest accumulation. With the loan dispersed, interest begins to accrue passively at a fixed annual rate determined by the protocol's governance. There are no periodic payments required and interest simply adds to the total debt, which is so fantastic because you can just predict and understand it's predictable. You know exactly what you're getting into. You know over the course of a year what you're going to have to pay in interest. So the difference is that one-time fee. That's what I like about that. But if you think about it, you can get creative with this, can't you? As you start, my mind spins at how you could, with some stable coins, capture CBLP tokens at a discounted rate there's also a way I think they get into down here where you can actually capture ADA at a discounted rate as well. In supply, use your discounted CBLP tokens. Yeah, you know, there's uh, some there's some extremely creative measures that I think uh, opens opens up to us all Cardano DeFi participators with the introduction of this protocol here. So look at this example again: a borrower with a hundred thousand dollar loan at 7% fixed interest rate will incur 7,000 yearly interest. This interest rate accumulates per epoch at 95.89 per epoch, calculated as 7,000, right? 73 epochs being one year. Every epoch is one is five days worth of time. So you divide 365 divided by five, you're gonna get 73 epochs. And so what I love about it is it's not that this 7% every epic is adding and then to the two. So it's not like it's like 95 gets added to the 100,000 and then 7% on top of that. And then 7%, it just compounds. And that's, that's, what you're, that's what you look at when you're in liquid finance. When you're liquid finance, okay, the interest is growing constantly and it's compounding and it's now, now you're being charged interest on that new sum. So if it's if it's a hundred thousand, uh, after one epic, your borrow now is one hundred thousand and ninety five point eight nine. In the next epic, it's going to be more. So this interest rate is going to accumulate more and more and more and more and more across that year. But the difference with Yam for here is that. No, just this $100,000 loan that you took out at a 7% fixed interest rate, you know that exactly it's going to be $107,000 you need to pay back at the end of that year. 
Okay, so staking rewards during the loan period, the protocol stakes the locked ADA. This is interesting too, because when you provide liquidity on liquid finance, like that 154, 156,000 ADA, that was actually 154 a couple of weeks ago. I mean, not a couple of weeks ago, a couple of months ago. But it grows because you are getting the a portion of the staking fees. I think you're getting like 2% or 3%. You're not getting the full uh, 5% from staking your ADA on liquid finance, but you're getting ADA. You know, that, that 156,000 is continuously growing on liquid finance. But in yam they are actually going to receive those rewards as revenue for the protocol. Okay. So the protocol stakes that locked data and all staking rewards are funneled to the protocol, not the borrower. That's different. The collected ADA staking rewards are then sent to the ADA auction portal where arbitragers can obtain a fixed market percentage discount on the price of ADA in exchange for providing stable coins to the protocol. The stable coins received for, from the ADA auction portal are immediately lent out, incentivizing more demand for CBLP tokens in the open market. You're starting to see how all this is coming together here. That's, that, that's exciting. Okay, so at mainnet launch, users are going to be providing ADA and they're going to, with the fair token uh, offering where you can take part in acquiring CBLP tokens from their launch, the ADA right there is going to go into and into the protocol. And uh, we're going to be looking at that. It's just going to be a wild, my imagination is very uh, keen on the different directions on how this can be interesting to actually take part in this cyclical, cyclical cycle, cyclical nature of Yam4's uh, protocol here. And so re repayment at any time the borrower chooses, they can repay the loan. It's done by paying back the principal amount of the stable coins borrowed plus the accumulated interest. Closure and collateral retrieval. Upon repayment, the borrower's NFT deed is redeemed while their ADA collateral is unlocked and returned to them. Stable coins used for repayment are then cycled back into the protocol's treasury to fund new loans. Okay, so throughout this cycle, the borrower ex retains exposure to the price movement of their ADA, benefiting from any appreciation and value as they are not required to sell their ADA to access capital. Let's look at, um, okay, and yeah, so we're, we're gonna look at the example down below, but right now I just wanna reiter reiterate that borrowers are not subject to margin calls or liquidation risk during their loan, loan term, regardless of price action of their collateral. They do also not have to make any ongoing interest repayments and their loan term is indefinite. This makes the M4 crypto backed loans more similar to perpetual long positions on the price appreciation of ADA than traditional crypto backed loans from other protocols or platforms. And so on the other hand, the M4 earns money from a loan when it charges the borrower that one time fee in CBLP tokens at the start of the loan. And then again, when interest is collected to clone the position and then also earns ADA from staking rewards. So that's how yam makes all of its revenue. That's why it can take on the risk of that market volatility, right? And so yam is essentially taking on that risk of market volatility so you don't have to worry about health factor. And it's made possible because of these three things, these three ways that it earns revenue, okay? The initial one-time fee in CBLP, interest collected when you pay your loan, and then also earns the ADA that you stake. So when you lock up that ADA, they get to receive those um, rewards and then use it in their treasury is that cyclical cycle. Because all capital is lent by the protocol, this is what we just talked about, a greater level of risk can be taken by the protocol on behalf of the borrowers and this enables them to operate. 
All right. The benefits of using YAM4, there are lots of benefits. It just redefines it. We, we actually said re, reinvent it in my little caption um, by offering unique benefits. It's, it's such an exciting upgrade to the world of borrowing and lending. It's a lot less stressful. I'll tell you what, I've had some, uh, some, some close calls. Uh, there's some big volatility events that happened. July 4th was a major one. Last August, I mean, I, I actually can remember these days because it was like, I almost had a heart attack, uh, you know, fighting to not be liquidated, you know? Um, okay. So you can read this and I encourage you to read it in complete, uh, form on your own time, but let's look at this hypothetical case study. Okay. So Bob's NATO holder explored Yam4 as an innovative lending protocol and wants to partake. And so he owns a thousand ADA and decide to engage with Yam4 secure loan. So remember, if you don't have Yam4, what if you just have ADA? What if you don't have CBLP? So faced with the need to cover a 25% CBLP flat fee to initiate the loan, he evaluated two distinct options provided by the protocol. So one is he could supplement ADA with CBLP purchase. So Bob could augment his position by purchasing an additional $250 worth of CBL tokens on a DEX like MinSwap. This purchase would increase his total position to $1,250, okay? So it'd be $1,000 worth of ADA and then $250 worth of CBLP tokens would be used to cover the one-time payment of his loan position. So Bob would be eligible for a $500 loan because you're able to, to borrow half of what you supply in ADA, right? So keeping in mind that Bob wants to supply $1,000, you have to then come up with 25% in this hypothetical. And th these numbers aren't going to be exactly like this, but you'll see how wonderful this makes sense overall. Going to get those $250 worth of CBLP tokens, okay? And so you're not taking a loan out on $1,250, you're taking a loan out on the $1,000. Okay, so he's eligible for a $500 loan reflecting a 50% loan to value ratio against his original ADA amount, reallocating ADA for CBLP. Here's the second one, right? So if you don't want to do this route and go buy $250 worth of CBLP tokens on the open market, the alternative involved reallocating 25% of his ADA to CBLP tokens, which would mean converting $200 worth of ADA into CBLP. This action would leave Bob with 800 worth of ADA to use as collateral, permitting him to secure a $400 loan from the protocol, maintaining a 50% loan to value ratio. And so in this hypothetical, Bob opted for the first option, acquiring $250 more worth of CBLP tokens so he can get a maximum loan amount while retaining his initial ADA investment. With his collateral in place, Bob received $500 loan from Yam4, equivalent to a 50% loan to value ratio against his $1,000 ADA collateral. This loan came with a fixed annual interest rate of 7%. Yam4's unique model meant that Bob faced no maturity date for the loan, no risk of liquidation, and no required ongoing interest payments. His loan position was represented by an NFT, which he got into his wallet, solidifying his ownership and terms. So think about it. You, you, you get your $500 and you don't have to worry about price volatility. Now, if you're, if you're in the world of decentralized finance, borrowing and lending, this comes as a, this comes as a big breath of fresh air, actually. Um, you don't have to worry about. And if you treat this $500 correctly, which is a whole other topic of a whole other video, it could be extremely advantageous. If you put this $500 to work correctly, it would way more then cover this 7% if you take advantage of, of market volatility, right? But that's not this video. As the crypto market evolved, Bob's ADA appreciated in value to $2,000 over a year, okay? So his original ADA that he supplied worth $1,000 is now 2000 worth 2000 So it grew 100%. At this point, he decided to close his position. 
To do so, he repaid the principal of $500 plus the accumulated interest of 35. Right? Because you're not paying your, the fee. This is like when I talk to people about they make this mistake. You're not paying 7% on a thousand, right? It's, it's obvious, but it's something that I think you should just say. It's something that you overlook. When you do the calculation, sometimes you calculate it because you have that thousand in mind. You're only you're only getting um, the seven percent. Obviously, is just on the loan itself, so the five hundred dollars that you're borrowing. Okay, and so that's thirty five dollars. So to do so, what does he have to do to get the uh, his two thousand dollars worth of beta back? He's got to pay the five hundred dollars plus that thirty five. Okay, so he claimed, he reclaimed his full collateral. That's now doubled in value. And so to look at this, throughout the loan term, Bob had no further financial obligations to YAM for, enjoying a hands-off loan experience. The protocol, in return, benefited from the staking reward generated by Bob's collateral, ADA, during the loan period. And in the end, Bob incurred a total cost of $285 for the loan. $250 for the CBLP flat fee in the beginning and $35 in interest. However, considering the growth in ADA's value, Bob concluded his loan term with a significant net gain of $1,715 demonstrated the effectiveness and borrow friendly nature of Yam Force lending approach. And this goes into a little tokenomics. Um, with over 75% of the tokens allocated to community members, this ensures that CBLP token is distributed across those who are most supportive to the protocol success, not just a few affluent individuals. So there's going to be 1 billion in total supply, 50% to the community. Um, this is a, the airdrop, the protocol treasury miscellaneous development team. What I like about it is you can go into uh, Cardano scan and check everything out. Let me see. Yes, it breaks everything down. Okay, great. Treasury, 5% of the CBLP will be allocated for the treasury, which enables individuals to indirectly provide liquidity to YAM4 via the CBLP auction portal. 50% goes to the community. Um, will be allocated with a generated revenue going towards bootstrapping the stablecoin treasury. So that's the fair token offering. Yeah. Miscellaneous. So, so when they launch their mainnet, there's also going to be a fair token offering. And when that event takes place with the with the launch of the mainnet, the funds will will be um, used to fill the stablecoin treasury, which then can be used to borrow. As users then will come in and supply their ADA and borrow against um, and borrow against that ADA. And to do that, they'll have to pay CBLP. So it's a really fantastic process. 20% of the CBLP will be allocated for miscellaneous development costs. These included CBLP liquidity provision, auxiliary development costs, community building. Um, there's a 1% airdrop for community members. This already uh, went through. Development team, 19% for the core development team. Okay, and I think that we aimed and talked a little bit about this, but it's just it's just exciting here um, to understand this little graphic, and this illustration on how uh, it, it YAM4, the simplicity behind its cyclical nature and how the protocol seeks to grow, right? There'll be demand, and then people will come in for funding and then supply they're taking by taking a loan supplying their uh, CBLP and then it kind of just kind of goes back into the demand with the with the CBLP token okay charging a multi how do they earn money they earn revenue by charging a multitude of fees for loans such as the CBLP flat fee crude interest um, as well as collecting the ADA staking rewards like we talked about and these re various revenue sources boost the pool of funds available for issuing more loans and helping the growth 
of the M4. So it's worth stating that CBLP token holders need to find the right level for loans. If the fees are too high, individuals simply won't want to take out loans. The perfect fee will have been temporarily found when borrowers are using all the stablecoin treasury available to be lent out. And so a lot, all those decisions are gonna be made through governance and you can have a direct say in that vote with your voting power in your CBLP token. Similar, that's why I showed you in the beginning of the video that I'm staking liquid finance tokens to the platform. And so through their governance tab, you have the ability to vote on proposals created by the community and your voting power equates to how much stake, how much you're staking to the protocol. So how many CBLP tokens you'll have will give you a voting power into deciding these key decisions, which to me make it really interesting. It's just a, it's just a level of feeling like you're a part of the project, right? You know, in, in the world of Web2, we have just grown so comfortable and used to not knowing anything about what a project is doing and not being a part of any decision. We're just on the back end receiving end of every single thing that all of the applications that you use right now, whether it's social media platforms, you name it, all of those decisions and new features and partnerships and upgrades and what they do with the treasury and the treasury itself, the monies, all of that is being decided by the centralized C-suite of actors and none of which is asked to you, the user. And this is what's so different about Web3 blockchain technology, and especially the Cardano ecosystem, as it seeks to really be the first mover, the first to market with a fully decentralized on-chain governance system. That every Cardano native token project like EM4, like Liquid Finance, gets to actually employ. MinSwap, all of them have this beautiful way of proposing ideas, directions, fees in this case, to the community and we can all vote so we all have a voice okay and the aim is to continuously grow the capital for the loans without significantly compromising the long-term growth of the cplp token value so we as holders are dictating this by deciding how often tokens are released via the auction portal and what percentage discount is offered to arbitragers think about that you know we get to decide and that's going to constantly uh, fluctuate like the like the rates of uh, loans and you know markets right now and banks and interest rates, all that stuff is decided by the, the powers that be. Um, but for this protocol and for protocols in the future, we get to decide. And, this, and the CBLP auction event occurs every 24 hours, allowing anyone to acquire CBLP tokens cheaper than market price, immediately benefiting from arbitrage. Okay, so the M4 protocol features a dynamic capital flow designed to fuel its lending operations and ensure liquidity within the system. At its core, the CBLP treasury is crucial for protocol's financial activities. So this, this treasury gathers fees from the protocol's operations, notably that major CBLP flat fee paid by borrowers when initiating loans. Portions of these fees are collected tokens and then allocated to that portal and then they're offered to participants and then deliberate arbitrage opportunities to incentivize attracting more stable coins into the protocol. Now, if you are unfamiliar with arbitrage is, is what you could do is you could, you could take out, like you could use your stable tokens, right? To acquire CBLP tokens at a discounted rate. You could take those CBLP tokens and do several things. Like you can also actually acquire ADA They're in these auction portals at a discounted rate. So you just triangulate the Jedi jujitsu that you could be doing here with arbitrage. If you have CBLP tokens that you got at a discounted rate, you could do lots of things with them. You could take them to the open market and sell them for profit. You could use them on the platform because when you when you buy the CBLP token off the auction portal for a discounted rate and then go ahead and take a loan out and pay the flat fee the flat fee you're not the, the CBLP token is not 
uh, counted as a discounted rate. It's now it's a full rate. Okay, so you can, I can imagine myself having some ADA that I want to use, having some stable tokens that I that that I want to use, and maybe not having some CBLP tokens. So I can take some stable tokens, capture some CBLP tokens at a discounted rate, then take my ADA, supply it to the platform, pay my one-time fee in the CBLP tokens that I just got at a discounted rate, and, and acquire more stable tokens as a loan. This can turn into a full-time job. This can turn into a full-time job. But I promise you, if you if 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 you in that ex, in that example up there with the thousand or even even something smaller to get your feet wet is um, something something to consider. And so let's check out one more um, nice little visual here. Let's check this out. All right. So this is like the how the how how it all works. Capital inflow. Let's look at it, huh? Okay. So somebody opens a loan. The ADA goes, the ADA, the ADA staking rewards from the deposited collateral go right to an exchange pool. The CBL tokens are removed from circulation because you need to deposit your ADA. You need to, you need to pay a CBLP token one time fee. And then which gives more demand for CBLP tokens. Okay. Cause they're t- removed from circulation and put into the auction portal. And then a minor re-inflow of tokens become available for the CBLP market the auction portal. ADA staking rewards from the deposited collateral. Looks like they go into an exchange pool uh, and USD exchanged for ADA. Okay. And that is going down into the USD treasury. The auction portal where you're coming in with your stable tokens and purchasing CBLP tokens are also going into this USDC tre- USD treasury and then makes funds available for borrowing to open up a new loan. And then when you close that loan, okay, the principal plus that interest goes also into this treasury and then makes available for a new loan. And so when we do our follow-up video to CBLP, uh, yam for protocol here we are going to look at some hypotheticals on what i have in mind uh, on the way up towards higher prices if we think the price is moving up and then what would we do then at the top uh, approaching a bear market right because m- lots of people get so um, upset about bear markets but there are such an opportunity. It's exactly the same opportunity, in fact, as a bull market. You just have to, you know, understand the opportunities that are presented to you and take advantage of those times when they actually uh, come into play. And so, yeah, if, if your if your holdings drop eighty percent, ninety percent over the course of a year or more, yeah, of course you're going to be upset. But if you captured the value at the top or near the top, right? Nobody has a crystal ball, but when you're up in the top zone area and you captured that value, you're actually pretty, pretty okay all the way down, all the way down that whole tire, that whole entire time um, that price is falling. Well, you didn't really fall because you took advantage of that at the top area, right? And if you look at some of my videos, I talk about the investor tools and, and, and all these charts that you can look at. Um, where you, where, where, you, where you dive into the world of technical analysis, not to, not because you know, because nobody knows, but because you can have a better opportunity to see the opportunities. And so at the top, if you take advantage of the peak top and you make the correct moves, well, well, with that value, can I then use that as a loan? Can I then supply that ADA as a value? And then can I not borrow against that on the way down and then capitalize on the way on the, on the bottom and the capitulation and sort of recycle the whole sequence again, just the opposite way and take advantage of the bull run. Okay. Governance, progressive governance. Um, and it just goes back into more 
it just gives you even more clarity of what these fees are and how the treasury works. Okay. And this is really interesting. What is the team control? The team control, the team controls with the, with the Oracle, the stake pool and the stable coin. The M4 is built with decentralization in mind. However, some aspects currently require temporary centralized management due to a combination of technical constraints and carefully considered design choices. The next thing that we're gonna do, if we went back to the website, there's the audit. I'm not gonna read this whole audit like I did the white paper. I'm just gonna skim through and just show you real fast and hopefully peak your, peak your awareness. And then it talks to you about their process of how it went through examining Yamfor's validators, how it looked for areas of vulnerability and security threats. And it lets you know that the audit took place over a period of several weeks and involved an evaluation of the protocol's mathematical model to verify that the implemented equations matched the unexpected behavior. And then they send you findings and it shows you diagrams that we're going to see here that I found very interesting. So here are the findings. First one, critical. USD can be stolen to borrow transaction. Yeah, that, that wouldn't be good. So it's great that they have audits for this, right? It was found to be critical. And then the status is that YAM4 resolved this issue. And, it, and when we see down below, what happens is after they give the findings, okay, then TX pipe gives suggestions and says, and says recommendations. This is how you can, so this was that first one, right? USD can be stolen in borrow transaction. Okay. And it talked about the vulnerability and talked about the description. USD can be stolen in borrow transaction as it is not checked that USD leftovers are all paid to a new USD vault. So the recommendation of the of the fix would be when, when from TX pipe is that when there's a remainder of USD in the inputs for the amount borrowed by the user, assert the following. And they give a line of code and the resolution is that, um, over these over the course of these weeks through the audit, YAM4 has been working very closely with TX Pipe to resolve the, the major issues. And you can go all the way down the list of their audit that they present to you right on their website to click. And you can see for yourself without any filters, YAM4, what, what they have to offer. And what, and what what they aren't, right? They're they're not a traditional lending platform where you have to worry about all those liquidations and margin calls and sleepless nights of uh, providing your providing your loans. And the I like it I like it for a for a big reason because if if you want to be safe on liquid finance, if you want to be safe on some of the traditional borrowing and lending platforms that have these margin calls and liquidations, you really need to have a high health factor. You need to have a health factor of like three or 4.0. Uh, and so to have a health factor of like 1.5, where you would put a loan up for a thousand dollars, right? And then borrow 500, that's a low health factor. That's going to be underneath of like 1.5. And so if there's any more volatility there, you're going to be at extreme risk for liquidation. And so you could lose a lot of that ADA that you put to, for your supply. And why I say that that I think is a key factor is that if you wanted a $500 loan on liquid finance to be safe, you're going to need to put up something like $3,000, $5,000. Because then your loan your health factor is going to be high. It's going to be four, five, six, 10, 12. You love it to be high, way high, so that it can have a very, um, like basically it would be impossible to get liquidated. There, the, the price volatility wouldn't be such that you would need to worry about liquidation. But if you wanted, if you only have, if, if you wanted that $500 loan, and you only had a thousand dollars. It's it's really risky to take a loan out on liquid finance. But Yam4, you don't need to put five thousand up. 
ten thousand dollars up for uh, for a thousand dollar loan, right? And if you had ten thousand dollars, so 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 when you start adding to these positions and you think of something like ten thousand dollar loan that you're putting up in ADA, let's say, right? And you're taking out, you're thinking that you want a five hundred five thousand dollar loan. Well. It, it's it's even more risky and scary, I guess you could say. The thought of being liquidated because that's ten thousand dollars, a lot more. It means a lot more to you. Not that a thousand dollars you don't care about, but ten thousand dollars gets liquidated. You're you, it, the pain starts to really um, be felt, you know. And if you, it's a hundred thousand dollars, obviously, it's, it's huge. So. What I like about Yam for is that if you do have that ten thousand dollar loan, you can put it up, get five thousand dollars, and not worry about liquidation. All you you're going to do is pay back the interest that you know that you're walking into. And if you treat the loan properly, and this is what we'll do when we go through some hypotheticals, is what if you took the five hundred five thousand dollars there, okay, and you brought it into something like MinSwap decks? and put it to work and it grew way more than 7% or it grew way more than 20% in most cases. And you, and you treated those loans, um, as, as something that you can put to work. I think a lot of people also make, um, not the best decisions when they do take out the loans out. You know, you get the $5,000 and if you just kind of waste it away on something, you're going to need to do something to uh, you know, obviously pay that back to unlock that, that ADA. Okay. But if you treat the loan properly, it can grow at a rate that might outperform your interest and therefore making it easy to unlock and actually give you and giving you a profit. So it's a way to actually acquire more uh, Cardano native tokens and expose you to more Cardano native projects that you might not be able to be exposed to with this specific amount of ADA you have.